IFRS 13 within this 25 minutes we have. So we have IFRS 13 on fair value measurement. Okay, so this standard is, is not new. It came in around 2008, so it's, it's been there for a while. And the essence of this standard is that it came to establish a framework for determination of, of fair value. You might have heard of fair value before now. When we're doing IFRS 2, we mentioned fair value. When we're doing financial instruments, we mentioned fair value. Right? So, IFRS 13 came up with a structured way in which we determine fair value. However, there are certain exceptions. Like IFRS 2 now, the way it determines fair value is exempted from IFRS 13. It's outside the scope. Like IS 2, there's something we call neutralizable value. That one too is exempted. That's no. The way they determine their own is based on their standard. There is a um, value in use in IS 36. That one looks like fair value, but it's not fair value. Right? So majorly those three are scoped out from IFRS 13. Now, when we are looking at fair value measurements, the first thing we need to look at is, okay, what is fair value? And IFRS 13 define fair value. So I want to look at the definition first. He said fair value is the price that is received to sell an asset or or paid to transfer what? A liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at when? At the measurement dates. Okay, so this is fair value. Fair value is the price that is received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. Okay, now, you see, the standard extensively explained this definition. And it is on this basis that they usually determine fair value. So what the ICANN has not asked you before is the determination of fair value with reference to this definition. Now, let's break down this definition one by each. The first one here is this. It said that fair value is the price that is received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability. Now, let me stop there first. Price that is received to sell or paid to transfer. You see, looking at it from the liability side, you are paying to to transfer your liability, meaning you want to settle up and move away from that transaction. Looking at it from the asset side, you are selling your assets, meaning you are disposing of that asset and moving away from that asset. So either of where you are looking at it, even though we're going to focus more on the asset side today, either of where you are looking at it, whatever money you are receiving, the determination is based on what? An exit price. So the determination is based on an exit price, meaning that fair value is only applicable to whoever is exiting the market. In fact, we are looking at it from the person that is exiting. So, first is this fair value is an exit price. That's what I need you to note. Therefore, 
in determining fair value, you are not looking at it from the buyer, the person buying. No. Our concern is the person that is what? Selling. Okay? How much did the person receive? That's our concern. We don't care about how much the other guy pay. It might be the same, but the seller, how much did you receive? If it's liability you are settling, how much did you pay? That is the first thing. The second thing is this. When we say that the price you received to sell an asset, focusing on asset, you see, the price you would ultimately receive will depend on the characteristics of that asset, majorly the condition of the asset and also the location of that asset. So another determination is that you need to focus or consider the characteristics of the asset in question, that is, the location and condition of the asset. If an asset is in a good state, that is, in, in good physical condition, it would definitely impact on the price you are going to receive because they will consider it. And also the location also matters or affect the price that whoever is going to ultimately receive. Okay, so these two majorly addresses the price that you can receive to sell an asset or pay to transfer your ability. It's an exit price and we consider the characteristics of the assets. That's one. Going forward with this definition, they said it must be an orderly transaction. And what do we mean by orderly transaction? What we are saying here is this. The transaction is orderly if the assets or the item that you are selling has been in the market for a while. Not necessarily so long a time, but it's been there. Whereby you have had time to create marketing activities on the assets so that people are aware of it. So for a transaction to be orderly, at least there must be marketing activities on the transaction or assets. We expect one word or the other, you should have marketed it. Right? That is when we know that, okay. Because when you have marketed it, what you will create is that there will be competition. A lot of people will be coming to you and be giving you prizes. Then, that might represent whatever you get eventually. So, you should create something we call competitive tension in whatever market you are marketing it. So let a lot of people be coming so that whatever price you are going to receive eventually is, can represent the fair value. That means that if this happens, then we know that it is not a forced sale or a distressed sale. Because if you sell something under distress, whatever money you receive can never, can never be a fair value. Therefore, we are looking at you must have done marketing activities. The asset must have been there. People must know about it. There must be competition, right? Competitive tension in the market in which you want to sell, and it must not be a forced sale. You see, these three points shows that, yeah, the transaction is orderly. This is what we mean by orderly. And finally, they said that between market participants, yeah, what the standard is saying here is this, that the buyers and the seller on that transaction must be independent of one another. Okay? Don't say, ah, because he's my friend. Okay, yeah, bring something. No. We are looking at a situation where the buyers and the seller are what? Independent independent of one another. Not only that, this buyer and seller that we call market participants
must be aware That is, they must know about the transaction. They must have good knowledge about the asset. So that they will not be giving you a price that cannot be a fair value. That's why they call them market participants. They must be independent of one another and they must be aware. They have good knowledge of, um, of that asset. Okay. So, this breaks down this definition. You see, the standard expect that you go through this, you determine this to determine fair value. You need to understand that this is an exit price. You are not looking at it from the money the person pay, but rather from what you received. Again, you need to consider the characteristics of the assets in determining fair value. It's important. The location and condition of the assets, you need to consider it. Also, orderly transaction, there must be marketing activities on the asset that will have created competitive tension. A lot of people are coming to buy, and it must not be a forced, a forced sale. Right? And finally, for the market participants, the buyers and the sellers must be independent of one another, and they must be aware of that transaction. Okay? So if these are available, then whatever price we eventually receive can be a fair value. Now, in determining a fair value, after you have considered this, the standard said that fair value can only be determined or should be determined in a principal market. He said it should be determined in a what? Principal market. They say that a principal market is a market where there is high volume of activities on the assets. A market So when you want to determine a fair value, all these things you are looking at, you should look at it in a principal market, a market where there is high volume of activity. So if you want to get the fair value of shares of a company now, the market you will go to to determine that fair value will be a principal market. And what's the principal market for shares? Probably be the Nigerian Stock Exchange. If you want to determine fair value of, let's say, a laptop or a phone, you have to look for a principal market where there is a volume of activity. Where do you think that would be? Okay, but if you want to determine the principal market for, let's say, a fund, for example, now you have some furniture and fittings. Which principal market would you go? <laughs> right? But the reality is that there are some assets that there might not be a particular market that there is high volume. They might be selling it in so many places. So the standard recognizes the, fa they recognize the fact that there might not be a principal market. Because how do you now choose? If they sell it here, they sell it there, they sell it in many places. So which one is now the principal? We will be measuring the volume of activities in that market. So the standard said that where there is no principal market, he said you should identify the most advantageous market. Say so that when there is no principal market, we should do what? We should identify the most advantageous market. So, we have mentioned two markets now. Is it that you are using a principal market or you are using 
the most advantageous market. And what is a most advantageous market? From the name, is the market where you can get the maximum price or the maximum value for that asset. The market where you can get what? The maximum price or the maximum value on that asset. So if there are many markets that they sell it, just get the one that gives you the maximum price. Then that's the market where you have to do your assessment to determine your fair value. Okay, so this is the story around fair value or value. Maximum price or value for that asset. So, if you are not seeing the challenge, I can see a lot of challenge in this. Because that means it to be highly subjective. If this is how they want us to get fair value, you should consider characteristics of the assets. There must be marketing activities. There must, I will line all of this for heaven's sake. Right? Okay, so the standard now introduces mat a mathematical way of doing this. Right? So ICANN has been asking that because that is one that is practicable. Nobody does this. Right? So there's a mathematical way. They call it valuation techniques that we'll look at next week. And that valuation techniques, you need to consider certain imputes. You need some, some data. So the standard also talks about, okay, which data is best that you should use? It talks about level of hierarchy. So what ICANN has been asking, they have been asking about valuation techniques and they have been asking about that level of hierarchy. We will consider those, I don't want to rush that, we'll do that next week. But they have not asked this. But the standard, this is the first thing the standard mentioned from this definition that this is how you determine fair value. That's why I summarized everything into nine bullet points. In case they ask you that according to this definition, how do you determine fair value? This is, this is the solution to that. But we have not seen them ask, so you could expect something else. So on a final note, to round up, you see, again, from here, from here, this is what I can see, right? So from this price we receive now, so if you have an asset that you sell, the selling price of that asset, let's say is, um, is 100 Naira. The selling price of the asset is 100 Naira. And... You got an agent to help you sell. So you paid the guy 10%. The guy collected 10 error. And the asset requires that you need to transport it on 5 naira. So if effectively, what okay, came? 85 naira, right? So now, they can ask you, what's the fair value? Of course, you'll have expected that all of these prices, this selling price you're talking about, will have been gotten in which market? In a principal market, right? But that's not even the gist now. The gist is that they have given you all your figures. What is the fair value? You see, the standard said the fair value is 95 naira. That the fair value is not 85. That it should be 95. That you should not consider this one. He said it is a characteristics of the transaction, not a characteristics of the assets, right? Which is why in determining fair value, what we consider as a characteristics of the asset, why is sales commission a characteristics of the transaction? Because it's an avoidable cost. It is not required to sell the assets. You don't have to use an agent. You can sell the assets yourself, right? So it's not a cost, this is of the assets, right? So we don't see it as an expense you incur. So we don't consider it when determining fair value. You only really consider transport costs. And if you look at transport costs, if it's an asset that you have to carry to where you will sell it, if you don't carry it, you won't sell it. You have to incur this. So this is, in a way, unavoidable. So it's a cost, this is of the asset. So usually, you see the examiner calling this transaction cost, right? It's not sales commission. There could be other expenses, but they group them together and call them transaction cost. So whenever you see transaction costs, we don't consider them in determination of fair value. We ignore, right? You only consider the one that is a characteristics of the asset, like 
a transport cost. All of these and more, we are going to look at them next week, where I will teach you valuation techniques and level of hierarchy, and ultimately we'll solve some questions and pass questions, and we're going to round up on that note, on that 30 minutes next week, so that we can then do, thank you.